So after the Reliant fiasco, um, decided to try uh, something else and got the Enterprise B here. And I actually started this several months ago, but uh, quickly got it got quickly pushed to the side. Um, however, I dug it out again, and I didn't record most of it on camera because I just wanted to build in peace and quiet. But I have it virtually all together, and I'll go over what we have here. Now, in case you weren't aware, the Enterprise B is virtually the exact same ship as the Excelsior. The Excelsior was in episode, uh, uh, what was it? I think it was in three. Yeah, originally it was in three, and it was in one or two other ones, I think. Um, and then when Star Trek Generations, they took that ship and turned it into the Enterprise B, and they did that by adding this somewhat ridiculous chunks coming out of the sides here um, and when AMT made the model they literally did the same thing the studio model they added these big chunks to and AMT on the molds they gouged out these big uh, troughs in the molds thus destroying the Excelsior kits and uh, turning it into the B which is sadly why you'll never see a um, reissue of the Excelsior kit so a little history there Anyway, I started building it and the um, first thing I stopped on was the inside here because it seemed so inaccurate and um, later I found out that was actually that this is not too far off, but um, that's why I stopped originally. Anyway, I built most of the ship here. Uh, the inside, which you can't see too much too very well, there we go, you can see some of the ribbing down there, which I thought was wrong, which actually that is correct, there is supposed to be ribbing there. Uh, the odd part is because they just cut these in the molding, um, there's big troughs on the inside, which you can almost see with some of the light coming through. So that cut away some of the detail. Um, I just spray painted gray in there, um, and once it's painted, hopefully you won't be able to see too much. I really didn't feel like rebuilding that whole thing. Um, I was way back when I first started this, I was looking for a aftermarket uh, shuttlecraft bay because this doesn't seem accurate at all but I couldn't find anything surprisingly but uh, here's our main hull we got the saucer section now there's a, a brand new bottom section that round two made for this kit and you can tell the for some reason the detail is a lot softer you have some nice really thin crisp lines here on the top part the old part and then the bottom part it's you can see these lines that are more uh, turned in a little bit more concaved, sadly. Um, there is a very light seam line around here, which I contemplated just leaving. I think you can if you want to, especially if you're going to be mounting the ship down like this. Um, no one's really going to see it, but uh, I started filling in for some reason. Now i got to go back and double, double fill some areas because there are still some gaps here. Is that that went together no problem here's the trickiest part of the kit is doing the nacelles now there's a bunch of clear plastic here and um, the main issue with clear plastic is you can't use plastic cement on it uh, I was using super glue and uh, just getting the placement and everything right is a bit difficult now this trying to figure out where everything goes was the other issue uh, this piece here I do have this built correctly just in case you have your kit yourself this piece can fit a couple different ways um, but you want it so these little hooks coming out are flush with the plastic and um, if you put together I screw this one up a little bit there's a bit of a gap there but I would put uh, put the two halves together first of the clear plastic and then put them into the bottom plastic piece and then put on the top um, another issue here again with the uh, like the gap of this thing here there are gaps underneath here as well which if I realized at the time I would have spray painted those dark gray as well because trying to get paint in there now is gonna be a bit difficult so I don't know how I'm gonna fix that but uh, other than that we are all uh, virtually all built I just got a few extra parts and um, that extra putting to fill in gonna leave the saucer off but build everything else um, for painting and once I get this done cleaned up 
Uh, we're going to start with the painting and then uh, move on to the decals, which is the uh, the big part. I got some aftermarket decals I'm going to show you in a bit. Right after I turned off the camera, um, started assembling what turned out to be the hardest part on this kit, which is these back sections here. Um, thought I'd just have to add them on, but uh, they made it more confusing for some reason. They're um, these fins that go on the back here, which there are mounting pegs on these pieces, but there's no mounting holes in the corresponding pieces, which makes it all very confusing. There's also some pegs on the top, or at least one peg, which I decided to leave thinking that maybe that's supposed to match this one here. I'm not entirely sure. Then uh, I had a hard time figuring out where to mount this piece. Um, again, it has mounting holes on it, but no corresponding piece here. And from what I can tell, this is all it does. It just extends this fin out a little bit more, which makes no sense to me because if the fin is supposed to be extended out more, why is not this original piece simply longer? So having this here, um, I just, I don't get at all. Um, really hope I put it on correctly, but uh, from what I can see from the kit, uh, it's correct. So um, there we go. So it's all done. Um, I just need to clean this part still and check for uh, any boo-boos anywhere. Since this is clear styrene, you can't glue this with regular plastic cement. I had to use super glue. You can use white glue or something too, but uh, of course super glue is uh, more permanent. But it is a bit difficult to see any uh, mistakes anywhere. Uh, but uh, let me wash this and prime it up and then we'll go the next step. So we're fully built and I've coated it with some gray primer. Um, gray primer covers up the putty a lot better and then I'll go back later with some white. But this is, this is just the first layer of primer to go through and find any little errors that need to be fixed up or little burrs that need to be cleaned up. I did a little bit here that needs a bit more fine sanding. So now that we're on to the paint, um, well, let me discuss that real quick and then I'll go into the other part of this. Um, the Enterprise B is white. It's just pure white. Um, for those of you who are not aware, the Enterprise refit, or the A, um, was painted with a per the actual studio model was painted with a pearlescent paint and it was really hard to photograph against the green screen. So all the other ships they, in that uh, era of movies, uh, all the other ones were painted just white. So uh, plain white coat, and that's it. Now the trick is painting all the different areas. If I remember what I did with the directions. Ah. So I got this massive, overly massive direction sheet here telling you where all the different colors go. However, uh, I want to paint this with the Aztec pattern as seen on the box here. And this lovely Aztec pattern, which is clearly a decal sheet, because you can see some of the lines there, uh, is not made by round two. They were gonna include this in the box, and then they decided it was too expensive, and then they just tried, decided to skip it. Now with the Reliance, they offered them separately for additional cost. With the B, they just canceled the whole thing. So this ship right here, as shown you, it is absolutely impossible to build unless you go around and cut all these out with uh, tape or do it yourself. So that's not happening. So the only other option is at creation models, which makes aftermarket uh, Aztec uh, decals for this kit. Now I've had this kit lying around so long because I've been, I was waiting for these for so long. Um, they're the only ones that make these decals and they had printer problems and for like six months they weren't printing anything and um, so I had to wait forever to get them because they weren't getting a new printer for some reason and I finally got them and a little disappointed these are not professional decals um, they're of course they're high, higher quality but they're something you would print out at home meaning that there's no protective coat over these decals you can tell that right away because there's not an edge around all the decals this is one just giant one piece one giant decal essentially you can slide the whole thing off um, and it also means that that the protective layer also protects the decals, prevents the um, the color from coming off. And um, it even says in the instructions, do not use any lacquer or enamel-based uh, clear coats on top of this because it will eat 
eat the decals and eat all the color off. And also these are made with a dot matrix printer, as you can see all the tiny little dots here, which once they're all on and you step a foot away, hopefully you won't be able to see that. Now, back to the color. Uh, as you can see here, there's decals for pretty much 100% of the ship. I mean, there's even decals for the, uh, the warp nacelle areas. Now, the trick is I have to figure out what is covered in the decals that I don't have to paint on the ship. And you can see this is a very extensive decal sheet, and I hope I don't miss anything. Now, I really, the blue areas, I really wanted to paint myself so I can get some masking and painting of my own on here. Um, however, you can see the blue is also incorporated into the Aztec pattern in various places. So I could paint the blue here, but I couldn't really do it where the Aztec pattern is here. Um, and because of that reason, I'm not going to paint this blue because there's no way I can get them to match. Uh, so that's not happening. The areas I do know that I need to paint are the neck area here, which the round two instructions say to paint chrome silver, which I'm pretty positive is wrong. I know it's black or a very dark gray. I have to double check the movie. Uh, I need to paint this inside area here is a different color. And also I want to paint the warp nacelles. They do give decals for this, but uh, this is so textured I'd rather paint it. Um, which also brings me to another thing I didn't think of until it was too late. Um, I thought about painting a dark color in here so that uh, all the empty space in that area doesn't sh uh, show so much. I should have done the same thing with the warp nacelles in here because I really can't get paint inside those areas. Some dark shading would have been really good. Uh, so if you're building it at home, leave this off and paint this separately and put it on later because it goes on real simple. Uh, you're not going to do much damage by uh, leaving it off and putting it on later. So that is the plan now. This needs a bit more sanding and need to let it cure for a little bit. And then I gotta figure out the rest of my colors. Black-ish and this is a bit confusing. There's three different colors on here. I gotta figure that out. But uh, we're moving on. Next step, hopefully you'll see, we'll start on the decals.